You are listening to The Underground Subway with host David Alston, a podcast dedicated to giving you the strategies to live a free and better life. Here is David Alston. Hi, I'm David Alston, host of The Underground Subway. Welcome to this podcast that is dedicated to one thing and one thing only, and that's giving you the tools, the strategies needed to live a better and successful life. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're about to go through, always remember that there is hope and that there is a better way and brighter days ahead. My friend, we are guaranteed to bring you quality and qualified guests on a regular basis, giving you all of the tools and strategies needed. As I said before, life is a journey. And in that journey, sometimes you have to load up the GPS system to tell you where you're going, when you're going to get there, and how you're going to get there. This podcast is dedicated to showing you how to get there. We guarantee you're going to show you when you're going to get there if you just use the road that we're telling you to take. But then the main thing, key, is up to you. You've got to hit the go button. And when you hit the go button, it is time to get there. Listen, let's get right into it. I'm excited about my guest. Let me tell you a little bit about my guest for this edition of the Underground Subway. Shay Sparks is her name. Shay has taken the obstacles of abuse, addiction, depression, anger, low self-esteem, low self-worth, and more to guide others to transform their trauma into treasure. Shay is the CEO of Sparks of Fire International LLC, a certified fearless living coach and trainer, host of the Power of Investing in People podcast, author of How to Get Your Voice Back, and co-founder of Firestarters Book Project. Listen, as a coach and a trainer, Shay guides leaders to step out of their comfort zone so that they may embody the tools and skills to lead with emotional intelligence and intellect through her Spark, your alpha program. Help me, join me, help me, join in welcoming to the Underground Subway, my guest, Shay Sparks. Shay, thank you so much for joining the Underground Subway. Well, thank you so much, David, for having me. I'm honored to be here, and your voice just is amazing. Well, thank you so much. (laughs) Let's jump into it because part of your bio says something that I've heard ever since I've been a little boy. I've heard it in schools. I've heard it in church. I've heard it wherever, you know, motivational speaking has gone on. I've heard this term about a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And in your bio, it talks about how your purpose is to help people to get out of that comfort zone. Well, tell us, Shay, in your own words, how does someone step out of what is called the comfort zone? And Well, first of all, what is a comfort zone? And then how do we step out of it? Yes, great, great question. So a comfort zone is exactly what it sounds like. It is where we are comfortable. We are living the just status quo. We are going about the day to day. We don't ever think about trying or doing or changing it to something new. Mm -hmm. So it's just going along as everything is and life is okay. And so there is nothing wrong with that. There is absolutely nothing wrong with staying exactly where you are. And a lot of people get unfulfilled. They start to go, wait. Is there more? Wait, I have goals. I have dreams. And that is everything that is out of your comfort zone. So anything that's out of your comfort zone is a risk, right? Mm -hmm. And risks can be scary. And so as a person who coaches in fear, that's where I come in and really help break through that fear to find, you know, a lot of times when we're trying to do something new, it remind fear, I won't say it, fear reminds us of that time when we were between, you know, four and 12 years old of something that we did that was new and, and 
scary and it didn't go so well. And so now here we are in our 20s, 30s, 40s and on, 50s and on, and we're presented with that same memory in our brain. That's fear. And fear is like, hold on now. We, no, no, no. We got to hold on, put the brakes on. So it's like when you're a parent and you slam on the brakes and you put your arm over to save your child in the passenger seat kind of a thing. Like that's what happens. Fear just steps in and says, hold up. We need to rethink this. And so how you get past that stepping out of your comfort zone is to really first be able to identify that that fear is there and then be able to understand and be able to call it for what it is, is that that fear is a liar. It is Mm -hmm. not true. However, it wants to protect you and keep you safe. Mm -hmm. And then if you could just take a moment and process through it, then that helps you to move forward in the idea, the thing you want to change, the dream you want to achieve, the, the goal that you've put out there. I have a question because you said something about four to five years old. Uh, how much of fear is uh, just not experiencing? I mean, it's one thing for me to be, I'm trying to think of something that I can say I'm fearful love that I've experienced, but mm-hmm. how much of fear is what we've experienced that has hurt us, whether it's a situation mm-hmm or relationship, or job, whatever, and how much of it is something that we've never even experienced? And when I say that, I, um, I'm, I'm thinking about that four- to five-year-old or three-year-old who says, I don't like to eat that, but they've never even tasted it. So their fear or dislike of something is based on something they've never even tried, as opposed mm. to someone who says, I don't like liver because I don't like the taste of it. <laughs> so right. how much in life, um, you know, how much in life is our fear based on things that we have actually experienced versus we're afraid to experience it? Oh, that's a really great question. So let me, let me share it to you this way. So when you are older and you say, I don't want to eat liver, because I don't like the taste of it. That is not fear showing up. That is a decision. Mm -hmm. If they say, oh, I don't want to try deer meat because it reminds me of the time that I went hunting and I had to shoot a deer. And I remember the feeling that I felt when um, I shot the gun and it killed the deer. That is fear. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me break it down to you this way. So there are physical fears as in heights, as in public speaking, as in um, spiders, uh, snakes. That's a physical fear. An emotional fear reacts in the same place and shows up the same way as a physical fear. An emotional fear is saying you're sorry, being vulnerable telling someone you love them for the first time, being able to tell someone how you truly feel, asking for forgiveness, Mm -hmm. asking for a raise. Those are emotional fears. So is there a statistic out there that says how much of the time does this happen? There probably is. I don't know that statistic. What I know is that what happens in our childhood Our childhood experiences shape our adult decisions. So maybe Mm -hmm. the person who is an adult, say, I don't like liver, had a time in their life where they tried something new as a a young person and realized that new things that they weren't used to didn't taste good. Mm -hmm. And maybe they got sick. Maybe they choked on it. Maybe it was really dry because to be honest, liver is dry. So maybe they (laughs) choked on it and that was scary to them, right? Right. So that sometimes will then interfere as in the fear will show up in their brain and it will interfere in their adult decisions now. What is the opposite of fear? Freedom. Okay. Um, That wasn't the answer I was expecting. (laughs) Well, there's a 
there's freedom, there's love, there's faith. And in my own business, it's fired up. Okay. <laughs> Talk yes. to us about fired up, Ben. You're so fired up about it. <laughs> Talk to us about yes. it. <laughs> so fired up. So uh, what you had mentioned is that I'm the uh, CEO of Sparks of Fire International and I am you CEO as Spark, uh, Chief Excitement Officer. And what that means is that I am excited about getting and helping and guiding and being a catalyst for other people to be excited about their life and business mm -hmm. Be because I am excited about my own life and business for the first time. It was many years ago that I was in an abusive relationship for 12 years and I was didn't even realize it until I was able to get out that I was just waiting to die. Wow. I was in that status quo. I was afraid to change. I was afraid to uh, leave. I was just waiting for him to kill me. And so when I was able to he peel away the layers of the onion that I am, like we all are, and heal, and still, you know, we're all in a healing process, I believe. I don't think we're ever actually healed in the past mm -hmm. tense. I think it's a journey like you would, you talked about in your intro. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. And so when I started to peel away the layers, I thought, wow, I had no idea that I had been stuck in this fear mindset of unwilling to do new things because I didn't think I had a choice in this, in the matter. I thought that this is my bed. I had to lie in it. How, how does that experience translate into your success that you are experiencing? Because, and the reason why I put emphasis, I place emphasis on the word experiencing is because, as you just said, if we're not healed and it's a journey, then maybe our success is a continuation or a journey. So how did your traumatic experience of uh, an abusive relationship contribute to your success that you are experiencing now? Mm -hmm. Great question. And you're absolutely correct. Experience success is also uh, a journey. It is not a, a destination. And so I love that you made that point, um, first of all. Second of all, how did it translate? Well, it translated in one, first and foremost, is having faith. Having faith in that God uses everything bad for good. Everything that happens to us is not happening to us. It's happening for us. And when I started to look at life through that lens and i started to look at life uh, through the lens of gratitude of what can i be grateful for that he was in my life what can i say oh i'm so glad he was in my life for this reason and then the next step i'd say that i did was i decided to really listen to other people who were speaking life into me that I had never had before. I had never had someone encourage me. My family home growing up was, um, wasn't as bad as the abuse, but it, it was familiar. So um, that's why a lot of women stay in abusive relationships is because, or a lot of people stay in abusive relationships because it's familiar. Somewhere in our past, in our childhood, um, most of the time our parents or our siblings have treated us very similar. And so we repeat the pattern in adulthood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had now, I was listening to the people around me who were speaking life into me and saying, you know, Shay, you healed and now you're sharing it with us that maybe you should consider being a coach. Maybe you should consider writing a book, starting a podcast, being a, uh, an inspirational speaker. Like there are so many things that you could do now because you're on the other side of this. And I just really started to think about what I feel like I was called to do at a very young age was to stand on stage with front of a group of people 
and speak to them. And I didn't know what that actually looked like or meant when I was obviously a, you know, five to seven year old in Sunday school, but I figured it out at this stage of my life, but during the healing process. And I thought, okay, so what if I do that? What does that look like? And what do I need to learn? And what is it that I don't know that I need to know in order to move forward? And mm-hmm. that is really the catalyst question that I started with everything and started to explore with curiosity. And I'll tell you about the comfort zone. The comfort zone doesn't want you to explore, wants to keep you just happy right where you are. But when I was like, no, wait, there is something bigger to this than I could ever believe, bigger to this than, you know, I was, my life was spared for a reason. So what is that? How can I, how can I repay God, so to speak? And I just kind of leaned into the fear and took steps out of my comfort zone and tried new things and physically in a safe, in a safe environment, but Mm -hmm. I tried new things physically and tried new things emotionally. And the biggest one was practicing being vulnerable. Wow. And practicing being vulnerable was something that I couldn't even, I even have a hard time just now saying the word. I couldn't Mm -hmm. even say vulnerable. It would stumble over it. I was Mm -hmm. so unfamiliar to me. And I would go to networking events and be okay with saying, I'm new here. I'm alone here. I am, don't know what, you know, I'm just here to meet friends or just to meet people to talk to. It wasn't about growing my business. It was Mm -hmm. just about practicing speaking to others. The question, Shay, is there a time in our lives, and hopefully maybe we can get come back to this um, topic of being vulnerable, but is there a, a good time in someone's life to be in a comfort zone? Sure. Um, sure. There's, you know, like I said, there's nothing wrong with being in the comfort zone. If you are married and want to have children, that's out of the comfort zone. Having children is out of the comfort zone if you've never had one before. Um, even if you have had one before, you haven't had the third one or the sixth one or the, you know, whatever. Everything that's new is out of the comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Or you've been, you haven't been married and you're like, well, maybe I should get, you know, I'd like to be married one day. So I wouldn't say that there is a good time or a better time to be in your comfort zone. I would say that it's more about not judging yourself for not for wanting to be out of the comfort zone. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. It does. Now let's go back to this vulnerability. Uh, how important is that? Is that something that is, can we put, we mentioned, we talked about the GPS going, is there a time frame that I need to be on this road of being vulnerable? <laughs> What does that actually mean? Does that mean that I put uh, there's an I'm, I'm from Philadelphia. So uh, mm-hmm. in the movie Philadelphia with Denzel Washington and Tom Hanks, uh, Denzel Washington is an attorney and he has a someone on the witness stand and he says to them, explain it to me like I'm a six year old. So explain it to me like I'm a six year old. <laughs> what is what is being vulnerable mean? Does it mean, as we used to say in Philadelphia when I growing up? Put, quote unquote, putting your business in the street? Does it mean exposing everything about me? What does that mean to be vulnerable? And is that a good thing? I like how you said that. Is it about putting your business in the street? The answer is no. Um, that comes with a whole nother topic called boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, being vulnerable is being able to say what you mean and mean what you say. Wow. Authentically and transparently. Wow. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> wow. That's very interesting. Does that, mm-hmm. is that, 
wow, I'm just speechless. Wow. Yes. Okay. I never thought of it like that. How important is it? Let's sort of shift gears and hopefully we don't go out in too far in the left field when it comes to vulnerability, when it comes to, you know, us uh, laying everything out saying how important when it comes to our comfort zone, what about even when, when you went through what you went through with domestic violence, with the abuse, the, uh, our, our circle, our, our inner circle, our friends, how important is it to have people in your circle that are on the same page as you while you're dealing with these issues? Yes. Yeah, so what I'm hearing is, if I, if I heard correctly, is that how important is it to be vulnerable with your inner circle? Yes. Yes. So first of all, it's absolutely crucial and vital to be vulnerable with your inner circle. Now, mind you, I want to emphasize that your inner circle is a support circle, a support system that encourages you and supports you in a very healthy way, first of all. And second of all, I didn't know or even recognize or realize and was ashamed of everything that I was going through. So I was unwilling to speak about it until it was over. Wow. No one had any idea that I was abused. No one, I never used that word. I wouldn't have even thought of myself as a, um, somebody asked me why I didn't go to a battered women's shelter. And I said, that thought never crossed my mind because I thought back. Mm. I never looked at myself as a battered woman. And so being vulnerable, again, isn't about sharing every single detail. It's just about being willing to say, I need help. Mm -hmm. And yeah. having, like I said, around that, your, that inner circle is having a support system that can and will help you in some way, shape or form. Your bio says something and reading about you, whether it's in your bio or just some information about you, it, you use a term that I think a lot of times we associate with males, but yet I want to ask you about it because it's something that you're doing and it's called spark your alpha. And when I hear mm -hmm. alpha, I immediately think about maybe I'm wrong for stereotyping, but I immediately think alpha as a male. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by spark your alpha? Yes. So thank you for asking. Alpha is an acronym and it stands for awareness, leadership, purpose, hope, and alignment. And we all have these attributes. We all have awareness and it's an awareness of ourselves and our opportunities. Leadership is stepping into our leadership power. I think sometimes, oftentimes people who, uh, especially in an abuse situation, but oftentimes, you know, in a, in a different role will say that they're not a leader, but in reality, they are a leader. They just haven't given themselves permission to call themselves a leader because we lead ourselves every day. Mm -hmm. Purpose, stepping into purpose. And what does that look like? What is our why? What, what causes us to really dig deep and want to do the hard work? And for me, it's because my dad was in the military. He was a veteran. He was um, drafted to Korea. And he was, and I didn't know the story until six months before he passed away. And he shared with me his story. And he said, I didn't have a choice. And when he said those words, it permeated my soul. And I thought, wow, I get it. Because I said that to myself about the situation I was in, that relationship. And I went, wow, get it. I get it. I, ha I am everything that's happened for me so I can help others see that they have choices. And hope to me is being hopeful, is having hope, is having that aspirational hope that is out of your comfort zone and the opposite of fear. It helps you, propels you out of that, that deep, dark depression sometimes to get you going forward. 
the foxhole, if you're the military mm-hmm. or the, the funk that you can't seem to get out of for years. That is mm-hmm. what hope is. And then alignment is really about when everything that you're doing starts to align in your purpose and in your leadership role and the awareness of all these opportunities, they just start flowing to you freely because you've opened a door and now that, that, that uh, law of attraction or reaping what you sow, whatever you want to call it, is now coming back to you. Shay, we're running out of time. There's an old adage that says uh, time flies when you're having fun. Mm-hmm. But before we run out of time, I really want to ask this question that I've been avoiding, but I guess I need to go ahead and get it out there. Are you saying in the simplest form that a person, I'm trying to pull on your history as well as your story and what others are going through or maybe going through. Are you saying that a person, an individual can be in an abusive relationship and yet that abusive relationship can be a comfort zone? And if so, what do you recommend the first thing this individual does to get out of that comfort zone slash abusive relationship? Yes. Absolutely. I'm saying that. So two, two books, first of all, I recommend reading is women who love too much. And even though it says women in in the title, it should be called people who love too hard because men are abused too. And Mm -hmm. I coach, I've coached several men through it as well. And the book boundaries and those two books saved my life. I also found a Christian counselor who really helped me uh, see and understand and helped me guide me through it. So those two books and then support system and a support of some sort is how you get out of that comfort zone. But absolutely, if all we know is inside the five mile radius of where we live and we Mm -hmm. don't go past that five and a half mile, then yes, that's our comfort zone. So what if what if I I read those books? I want to read those books. I want to get help. But I'm afraid that if he finds out what I'm doing, he's going to get me. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I was there. I had that. I definitely ask you uh, to at look for help. Ask for help. Um, you can. There's. I know there's um, hotlines for abused women, especially in every city. Um, uh, shelters. There's in every city. Um, you can reach out to me and I, I will definitely connect you with the resource. I will find it for you in your city. Uh, I'm sure David, you probably will be, would love to do. There are plenty of resources out there to at least get you out of the situation. It's up to you to re- rehabilitate your own self because they won't do it for you. Tell us uh, real quickly, how can we get in touch with you or get any of your material that you may have or your website or anything? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you can always f- go to my website at shaysparks.com. That's S-H-A-S-P-A-R-K-S.com. You can connect with me there on so my social media links are there. You can listen to my podcast, The Power of Investing in People, on all podcast platforms. You can also email me at heyshay at shaysparks.com. And, you know, feel free to ask me, you know, what you know, if there's a, a question that you're having, or if you're in this abusive relationship that you want to get out, if I can help you with resources to in your in your neighborhood, I will definitely forward those along to you. Well, thank you, Shay, and thank you so much for spending time with us. And hopefully, we come back and do this again in the future. Well, thank you for having me. this. Was a, a beneficial conversation. Thank you, Shay. I want to thank Shay Sparks for joining us. This was very informative, informative, and as she said, beneficial. And I learned so much from it. I want to thank our listeners for joining us on the Underground Subway. I hear the music playing, which means that the train is pulling into the station, and it's your time to get off of the train for this edition of the Underground Subway. However, again, I want to give a special thank you to our special guest, Shay Sparks. And I want to challenge all of you, if you are in an abusive relationship or know someone that is in one, reach out to Shay, reach out to someone, get help. Don't just stay in that comfort zone. Come out of it for yourself and for everyone around you. 
I want to tell you again, thank you for joining us. I take it now for granted that you've taken time out of your schedule to listen to the Underground Subway, whether you're on the treadmill or at home or at work with your AirPods, wherever you may be. I want to thank you for joining us. Well, it's time to go, but we'll see you next time on the Underground Subway. But before we go, I want to challenge you tonight, before you go to bed, find a mirror, look yourself in the eyes and ask yourself a question today, today. Did I do something to make this world a better place today? Did I do something to come out of my comfort zone or did I just waste another day? Hmm, think about that. No more time to waste. We'll see you next time right here on the Underground Subway.